repose of the soul of Sister Marie. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Let us together celebrate our faith in this Holy Eucharist, in particular the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just last Sunday we celebrated the Pentecost. We still be saying together with Saint Augustine. He said, Come, Holy Spirit, descend plentiful or plentifully in our hearts. In, so that we may understand to a certain extent not completely the mystery of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit becoming one in love. In case we have failed in our duties and responsibilities, let us ask the Lord for pardon and grace. Or has any God ever attempted? 
of another nation, by trials, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by terrifying displays of power, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt for before your very eyes. So acknowledge today and take to heart that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no other. Keep his statutes and his commandments which I am commanding you today for your own well-being and that of your descendants after you, so that you may long remain in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that we 
are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Also as a society. 
In effect, we are creating God in our own human Im image. Try, for example, Googling God the Father under images. And the most common picture that comes up is of an older man with a beard and long flowing white hair dressed in robes. Yet, that's ridiculous because God is not a man. In the first chapter of Genesis, it tells us that God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Clearly God embodies both male and female. But to understand God, even in these terms, is not nearly really enough. Our first reading today reminds us that God created human beings. Called to Moses as the voice of a God speaking out of the fire. And has been manifested by signs and wonders and by terrifying displays of power. This is not the work of a human. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of the heavens and the earth. In fact, the Bible paints a picture of a being who transcends all of time and all of human reality. A God who in every single positive dimension is completely off the charts, unimaginably powerful, incredibly just, infinitely loving, inexhaustibly merciful, God is also completely beyond the grasp of even our wildest imaginations. God is a mysterious, transcendent, holy one. It's no wonder that the ancient Jewish people considered God to be so holy, so far above humans, that even the name of God given to Moses at the burning bush was too holy to be spoken out loud. In light of this holiness, the ancient Jewish people created an image of God as an all-powerful king who ruled his people with justice. The problem is that, as humans, we consciously or unconsciously assess our place in society and then associate with the people we consider to be our peers. I mean, who, who of us would ever think of calling up the Pope and inviting him out for a cup of coffee? It's an even scarier proposition when you think about the Holy King of the universe. Disconnected from God by our fear, we resort to human ways. And we know how that always turns out. God is a transcendent God. Not a monarch ruling humanity from a distance from on high. And as insignificant as we might feel when we compare ourselves to this holy God, God has such a boundless love for us that a burning desire for this love would overwhelm us draw us in, if we would allow it. But fear overwhelms us instead, and we hide from God, which is why God the Father sent His only Son, the very essence of God being, to be born of us, to live humbly among us, to laugh with us, suffer with us, and die for us. Jesus was a powerful human witness who showed us what loving God and loving each other truly meant. Jesus showed us that God is not just the God of the world out there, but he's also the God of the world within us, the God of our hearts. From the Son's incredible, selfless act of love, 
We continue to grow in our journey towards God, even though we were the ones who crucified Jesus on the cross. His love was stronger than our fear. He set us on the path back towards God, who wants to embrace us and surround us with love and joy. The time of Jesus on earth was too short for the world to fully absorb his message. But as he promised before he was crucified, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit came to testify on his behalf, to teach everything, to remind us of everything Jesus has said. The Holy Spirit is the most enigmatic of the three persons of the Trinity. The most common images we use for this mysterious being are the white dove, fire, water, wind, and breath. None of these insights, none of these images give us any insight into the personhood of the Holy Spirit, the way the images of Father and Son do. But then, does it really matter? The Catechism tells us that we know the Holy Spirit only in the movement by which the Word is revealed and Christ is unveiled to us. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because it neither sees the Spirit nor knows the Spirit. Those who believe in Christ know the Spirit because the Holy Spirit dwells within them. What we're able, unable to comprehend with our minds, we understand through our hearts. While talking about the Holy Spirit in the second reading, St. Paul beautifully captures our relationship with all three persons of the Trinity, saying, It is that very Spirit bearing witness with our Spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. This is unbelievably amazing. Despite all our fears, all our failings, and all the wrongs we have done, we only need to allow the Holy Spirit into our hearts to be children of God, and brothers and sisters with Christ. To be honored and loved in this way seems too inconceivable to be true. And yet the manifestations of God's love embodied in the Son and the Holy Spirit are unmistakable. Clearly, God wants us. And we need God. So let us open our hearts and let go of our fears so that we might be drawn into the joyous depth of God's love. Let us profess our faith reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in a conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us ask the Holy Trinity to bless our intentions and petitions and make them realize in our lives. For the people of God, striving to embody the truth of the Trinity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, working for peace in war-torn regions of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, responding to the call to be a community of God's love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, especially in our efforts to reflect God's love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the infirm, as well as those who care for them, may they feel the presence of God as a source of their strength. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, the repose of the soul of God mercy, may they be welcome in the glory of God's heavenly kingdom. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless these intentions of ours. Bless us all. Thank you for keeping us secure and safe in this difficult time. Bless all of our family members, friends and relatives, especially the children. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sanctified by the invocation. 
invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be alone in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For there is praise, for this is praise by angels and archangels, cherubim, Jew, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim.
the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose died, whose death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May we make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Teresa of Lisieux, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing them. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, and with your servant Francis our Pope and Marcella our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family. Whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at this at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. They we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow honor all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter my roof, but only sin and my soul shall be healed. With the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let it not be said that I invoked you in vain. And since you can do everything with Jesus and Mary, show me that your witness is as great as your power. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you, Lincoln, for preaching for us. Amen. Good. Thank mm -hmm. you.